Hi, all. I'm Dan Smegrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Today is Thursday, August 5th, 2021, and you're watching WGAN-TV Live at 5. We have an awesome show for you today, how to custom build a case for your drone and or DSLR camera with my case builder. And here to talk to us about that today is my case builder, president, founder, and owner, Steve Holland. Hey, Steve, good to see you. Thank you, Dan. Good to be on. And, and thanks for being back on the show. You were with us in December. We were doing a show on four hard cases for Matterport Pro Camera uh, and also how to customize foam. Uh, I thought it'd be great to have you come back to talk about a similar topic because so many of our uh, We Get Around Network forum community members are also drone pilots. Oh, absolutely. And have uh, DSLR cameras and DSLR. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, be, uh, and, and before we, we do a deep dive on how to custom build with my case builder, uh, how about giving us just an overview, the highlights of your company, my case builder? Okay, great. Uh, so, uh, basically, with my case builder, you could create the custom foam exactly for your needs right on our website. So, you know, you could buy, let's say, a drone case or a DSLR case uh, from, you know, pre-made cut foam, but it's only what they think you need to put in the case. It's not what you actually really have. So you might actually want to put your drone and maybe your camera and maybe your uh, iPod, iPad, and so on and so forth right into the same case. Well, you could do that on my case builder. You could drag and drop around, create the design on our website, and we'll send you either the foam only if you already have a case or a case in foam. Uh, cool. So be before we actually dive into to doing that, yes. uh, let's still talk about the company. I, I know even sure. while you were setting up, you were, you were on your, uh, your laptop and I was almost getting a factory tour. Uh, looks like a big place. Looks like you've been around for a long time. Looks like you carry a lot of cases. Uh, tell us a little bit more about my case builder before we jump into the topic. Sure. So uh, my case builder, uh, uh, basically my father started a foam company, F-O-A-M, foam company in 1986. He'd been in the foam business for since 1962. So however many years that is, I can't do math on uh, Thursday afternoon. Uh, but uh, basically, uh, so I took over in 97. We had three employees. We were doing foam for packaging. And in 2003, we broadened our horizons to include case foam, custom case foam. And people kept coming up to me and they said, you know, Steve, I want custom foam for my, you know, camera or for or whatever it is. And I would say, great, send me your camera. And they said, well, I'm not going to send you my camera. I need my camera to make money. Uh, I need my, you know, uh, my lens, my guns, whatever it is that you're going to put in the case, they can't part with it. So that's where my case builder came into play, which is the idea where you can create your own custom foam. It's going well. So uh, right now, uh, post pandemic, we have about 34 employees. We were 40 pre, but we're getting back up there now. So uh, we have about uh, uh, 36,000 square feet of space here in New Jersey. Machinery, we cut our own foam, we stock all the brands of cases. We don't make cases, but we do have our own brand that we bring in from Italy. Uh, the Doro case line, spectacular cases very similar to Pelican, but basically we stock the cases, we stock the foam, we cut it for you, and we get it all out within, you know, one to two weeks. And, and I, I recall that you have lots of brands. Yes, yes. So if you're looking for heavy duty cases, which most of the time everyone is, right, so there's Pelican, that's the name brand leader, they've been doing it for 30, 40 years, also going to be the most expensive. And then you've got SKB, great brand line, HPRC, Seahorse, Nanook, our own brand, Dora. I mean, we, I, there's about 11 different brands that we, that we sell online. And if we don't have a brand, we usually do have the foam for that brand. So even if we don't sell it, you can still make the foam for it. Okay, cool. And, uh, and e even before we do this, how to customize the foam based on your gear, mm -hmm. um, uh, I think it would actually be helpful to, to, to talk about, you actually have some pre-configured yes. cases. So uh, how about talking about that even before we take a look okay. about how to customize it? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So, you know, I was saying maybe you might be able to find a pre-configured case for your drone. Okay. Uh, they have, we have them on our website, so you could just buy it. Do you, how about taking us online? Let's take a look. 
And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. so, we'll so, so Steve's going to go to mycasebuilder.com. While he's doing that, know that our affiliate link is wgan.info forward slash mycasebuilder. It'll take you to mycasebuilder.com, but you'll then be eligible for two special offers that we have worked out with Steve. So, uh, uh, so we're on the, the website. Again, you can get here either by going to mycasebuilder.com or the WGAN affiliate link, wgan.info forward slash mycasebuilder. Yeah. So I was asking you, Steve, about these pre-made designs specifically for drones. Correct. So we could go right into pre-made designs right over here on the website. And you'll see that we have them for everything, including drones, cameras, you name it. So we could go to the drone case section. And basically in here, you'll see that we do have pre-made ones, some for the mini, some for the uh, Mavic, some for the, you know, all different kinds of pre-made designs with all different kinds of cavities for them. This one is a customer made this one here. So uh, basically you could start, you can either buy these as is, okay? Um, or you can use it as a starting point to then go and customize further. So for instance, let's say you have this one over here that the user designed. So this is a really nice case. It's got the charger, he's got uh, the, the, you know, the Mavic, the two different ones, the Crystal Sky. But let's say that you, know, you don't have that Mavic 2 hub, you need something different over there or whatever it is. So you can customize the foam and you just click into it. And basically from there, you'd be able to get a representation of all your cutouts and you can say, you know what, I don't need this cut out, so let's just delete that one or move this one around or add more batteries, that kind of thing. So I know that we we're gonna get into that later, but I just wanted to show you that's how you would actually start with a pre-made design and then customize it further from there. So you don't have to start from scratch. Uh, and then if you maybe go back to the, the menu that shows the different drone brands, uh, just on the left. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, just, just on the left. So I. Uh, so I, I, I think in terms of the We Get Around Network Forum community, WGANforum.com, uh, I would say probably the, the versions of the DJI, the Mavic, uh, Mavic Air, Inspire, Phantom. I, in fact, uh, I, I've heard conversations about nearly all the, the drones there. Right. Uh, so that's good. So that means that there may already be a pre-configured style so maybe we could yeah. just pick maybe a Mavic Air maybe to, to yeah. start there. So and then it that, looks like it sorts. So you have one design. So we have one design for that Mavic Air right there, correct? And then if you want to, you know, let's say the Mavic uh, Mini. So there should be another one over there for the Mavic Mini. Uh, so, you know, the, 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 we don't usually have too many pre-made designs because it... it, it, it um, uh, it, it's, it exponentially grows, right? Because you can really put uh, almost anything into your case. So that's why we start with a, a basic setting and then you can add anything else you want to it from there. Yes. And then if you, uh, let's say, go to uh, you know the Inspire, then you're gonna get to some more over here with landing gear, you know, with travel mode. So the different methods for the, uh, you know, the, the cases. Okay, cool. And uh, I, I noticed the textures look different on some of these types of foam. One's blue, yes. one's black, one has a different texture. Can you speak to foam? Absolutely. So I'm going to stop my share right now. So you can see, I, I do have some samples here for you. So starting with this, this right here is an ester foam. This is like the standard foam you would get in a pelican, a pick and pluck. And you can see that it's, it's really spongy, right? If I go like this, I can basically squeeze that down. And um, we, we, we do sell this foam, people are used to it, but we don't really like it that much uh, because you need a lot of it to cushion, right? Because it, it's so spongy. So what we use is a polyethylene foam. So this is uh, a really uh, upgraded foam, we can say. It's a lot stiffer, but yet still, okay, is able to, it's hard with the camera here, it's still able to squeeze uh, enough, but not so much. And we have that in the standard black. We have it in black and red, which is very sharp. The blue is one of our favorite colors. Uh, most of our customers like that as well. And then the yellow, 
So those are the choices of our top guard material. So we call it top guard because the top is actually a higher density foam. That color piece is actually a higher density foam, which makes it almost scratch proof, okay? It's really gonna take some beating. You could take your uh, gear inside and out of it hundreds of times, you know, it's really not gonna cause any issues whatsoever. So that's uh, our, our main foams. And then there's a pro cell foam, which is right here. So the pro cell foam, it's like a fine cell polyethylene PE. It's really nice looking. It's a beautiful foam, I call it. It's also more expensive. So for 90% of people, our top guard foam is, is the way to go. Some people do want that image, that look, that feel, that soft feel. That's where your pro cell would come in. So that's our types of foam that we have. And very exciting. Uh, I can uh, uh, basically announce that coming soon, Okay, this is um, first time I'm, I'm telling anybody about this. You're, you get the exclusive scoop on WGAN. We are going to be able to uh, very shortly full color print on your foam. So you can do some amazing things like label your cavities. You can put logos, your logos. You can uh, put all kinds of graphics, colors, you name it. We're gonna be able to do it right on your foam. It's spectacular. Very excited about it. Hopefully that's coming in about a couple of months. So, but I'm telling everybody right now. Okay, cool. Congratulations. Very exciting. Yes. Um, I could imagine it's a little bit overwhelming. Uh, when you come to your website, there's a lot of options. So do you, do you recommend that you begin with which brand case you want on what you're planning to use? the case for, how, what's the best strategy for, for beginning this process? Sure, so uh, right, uh, basically you could go onto our website, you could look by brand. So if you know your brand that you're looking for, you can pretty much uh, go right to the Pelican or right, go right to SKB Adoro and find your case model or brand or size. The other thing that we do is we also have a case by size. So if you know approximately the size you want, and I could show that to you in a second. You could basically go to the size and it gives you a list of all the different cases. But we're also launching something uh, next week, which is called Suggest a Case. This is brand new. And basically you can draw your design, hit Suggest a Case, and it's gonna find a case that fits exactly for you and give you those options. So I could show you that uh, if you would like. Yeah, uh, that, that would be great. Why don't, why, don't, uh, why don't you go ahead and share your screen. Okay. Uh, and I, I guess I can imagine if I was interested in a pre-designed case uh, yeah. like you were showing, you probably have already set a default recommended case and a recommended foam. But if I want to switch my case to go up or down the, the spectrum, may, maybe I prefer different wheels, maybe I prefer different handle, may I, maybe I prefer s some other feature of a particular case, yep. I can start with a base case uh, that's already been recommended in terms of if you're planning to do uh, an Inspire, then here's the case that we've recommended to begin with, here's the foam we've recommended, here's mm -hmm. a, here's a pre-configured case and now you can kind of tweak to say well uh, I actually need uh, more cavities uh, for maybe my DSLR that I'd like to carry in the same case yep. or maybe I want to switch to a different brand case or I want to switch to different foam or I want to switch to even a different depth of maybe layers of of foam. Absolutely. Absolutely. You could do all of that. And I will go over that real fast here. I'm just getting this set up so okay. I can do this. Uh, all right. No, no need to go fast. Like take, oh, okay. take your time to go over, you know, however long it takes to, to, to okay. show. I, I think anybody who's actually interested in custom building a, a case for their drone and or their DSLR camera is actually going to find this super helpful. Uh, so I don't even mind if it's, you know, even at a little bit of a training level to, to, okay. to say, um, Absolutely. The, the, you, know, you know, suggestion, maybe begin here with a pre-configured case, maybe. Absolutely. So um, I'm just, uh, I didn't have this set up because I was running around. So the suggest mode, I don't have uh, ready to show you. Yeah, so that, I will that, show that, you uh, that's, the rest of it. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's fine. Okay. Uh, but you'll, you'll tell us again in a little bit yes. more depth 
of that new feature that's coming of how suggest mode will work. So that would be cool. Exactly. Okay. So you should be able to see my screen here. Yes. Okay, great. So yeah, let's, uh, let's start with find a case. So let's go to all cases by size, because basically this is a great feature until we get suggested case uh, live. Uh, this is a wonderful feature. So if you lay out your items on a table, you'd be able to, let's say, you know, look around uh, at the size. So let me go to a, a popular size, which is obviously the carry on size. Okay. So that's about a 20 inch by 11. And you'll see it right here, approximate and airline carry-ons. So now, so so that's actually identified ahead of time to say if 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 you plan to be on a plane, yep. uh, here are cases that that meet the airline's qualifications. Exactly, exactly. These are the maximum airline carry-on size. Obviously, anything smaller will be able to go on, but these are the ones that were are made specifically to fit in the overhead bin. Correct. So basically uh, at this point, you can choose, you can see the different brands. Every brand makes one basically is a, is a uh, size that's around the same size to fit in there. Mm -hmm. And they vary with, you know, case with foam, they vary very widely as far as what the price is on that. So let's go with, uh, let's say the uh, Pelican Air. Sorry, I'm confused, Steve. I, I, you, you, I think you showed us four different kinds of foam. So if it says case with foam, then you're defaulting. We're defaulting our top guard foam. Yeah. Top guard foam. Top guard foam, correct. Say yeah, again, that's, that's our most popular and our, uh, you know, really the best foam for about 90% of the people. So, okay. But uh, if I start configuring and, and I want to go up a grade or down a exactly. grade, I, I can do that. You can def absolutely do it. Yes. Okay. So when you come in here, you see the 1535, and then you can start building your foam. Let's take a drink of water here. So what you see is an outline of your case. Here's the handle over here, here's the hinges. Here's some wheel wells that are inside the case that are protruding inside. So if we just take a look at our 3D right now, what you're gonna see is a block of foam. And here's our wheels coming up to the, to the bottom there. And that's just our block of foam. So it's very simple, <coughs> excuse me, to go forward and go into our library and search for whatever it is that you're trying to put in. So you can do by category. So let, you know, let's just say uh, drones, okay? So we're gonna get to all those drones. You can go by brand at this point. So let's say we go to DJI. And so you'll see that there's all kinds of shapes. So even if we didn't have a pre-made design for the drone itself or the shapes, <coughs> oh, sorry, I tend to, to talk very loud when I'm talking on these Zoom, so I'm gonna talk a little lower so that I don't keep coughing, <coughs> excuse me. So basically with the drone, you can pick whatever shape that you want. So let's say you did have this shape, so we can add that in and then you can drag it wherever you want it on your screen. So if I check my 3D now, you'll see that I have that cut out right there. It couldn't be any easier, <coughs> excuse me. Now it looks like that actually went through the, the full depth of the foam. <laughs> Do I need to worry about the safety of my DJI? Oh, uh, no, it'll tell you. There, there's actually foam on the bottom there. Yeah, if it, if it, if it went all the way through, uh, it, would, it would warn you, yeah. So, for instance, okay. let's just say that, you know, um, let's say you were putting a rectangle in and you're putting it in by six inches. So six inches deeper than the base. So it will tell you at this point and say, hey, your cutout's gonna exceed the usable base depth. You can um, watch a nice video with me in it explaining how your shapes will stick up into the lid a little bit because, you know, uh, so you can cut completely through the foam. It's gonna come in yellow because it's cutting through the foam and then you'll actually see the background behind it. Ah, oh, okay, good. So it's gonna help me make sure I don't make a mistake <laughs> uh, uh, like having the depth exceed the depth of the case or the depth of the foam. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So, <coughs> oh my God. So, um, wow. T take a moment with the water. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the two special offers that we have. Okay. Uh, let me do that. Use the affiliate link, uh, wgan.info forward slash my case builder, and that'll enable you to get two special offers. 
Uh, the first is free shipping using the coupon code WGA free ship. That's all one word WGA F R E E S H I P. And that'll get you free shipping. And then second, save your case because you can receive 12 months of WGAN TV training you in Matterport when you use the WGAN affiliate link to buy any case for $100, excuse me, $150 or more directly from my case builder website, again, using the affiliate link WGAN.info forward slash my case builder. Uh, so we have those two special offers. Uh, uh, Steve, you ready to give yes. it a go? I think so, yeah. It, this okay. happens sometimes uh, when I uh, when I talk too loud. Okay, so again, I'm going to talk quieter. So uh, basically, uh, at this point, you can either do rectangles, circles. You could draw your own shapes if you want. You could even take a picture of anything that you want to put in your, your case. Trace the photo right from the picture. So if I go into here and go to, uh, let's say, drones. So like here's a Mavic. Uh, no, let's see. There's drones uh, right there. Yeah, so we could take this. Uh, there we go. So let's say that was not in my library. You could take that against a white background, drag to the left. It's going to trace it automatically for you. And in the next step, you just scale it with two dimensions. So a length left to right. So let's say that's uh, you know 12 inches and then a depth, how deep it sits in the foam and then create the shape. That's crazy. Just like that, isn't that nice? Yeah, exactly. Now it looks like you're, you're overlaying the orange where either the wheels or the handle is. Is there a warning because I've now went too deep? related to where the, the wheels are? That's a good question. So the answer is we let you sort of do what you need to do. There are times that you wanna maybe put some cables right over the wheels and you, it's okay to stick up into the wheels. When you show that 3D drawing here, you're gonna see where you come up into those wheels over here. An engineer also checks every single design to just to make sure that uh, there is no situations where you're touching wheels where you don't wanna to touch wheels. But you can, you can see that right in the 3D. Absolutely. You know, I, I, I think looking at that 3D model of that particular case, it, it kind of said, well, why might I pick one case over the other, one brand over another? I imagine in some cases the, the wheels are deeper into the case Absolutely. and in some cases they're not. So I could still have the same perhaps outer case size, but not have my wheels intrude as far into the case. Exactly. So if we took this and we changed this, let's say to the uh, the Doro case, same outer size. Okay. Uh, those wheels, I believe, are thinner on there. Uh, actually, they're not. They're the same. But uh, yes, it's exactly right. I picked the wrong one. But that's uh, basically the situation there. Correct. That you'd be able to um, change your case to different sizes based on what you're looking for. So something like this one, you know, uh, doesn't have wheels. So you'd be able to change around and you didn't have to change your drawing at all. Just switch to the uh, different cases, so on and so forth. It's very easy. So let me show you what you were talking about with the, uh, with the uh, trays. So let's just say that you had, <coughs> here comes the coughs again. That was good for a while. So let's say that you uh, have a bunch of of batteries. And you can see that and you'd say, wow, <laughs> Steve, that's a terrible, terrible design. So one thing you could do is you can use our automatic alignment tools like that, or you can just drag everything there, go to align, align them to the top and then evenly space them in the case. So I'll space them evenly. So that looks beautiful. So you, you used the, it went a bit fast for me, but because oh, sure. uh, I would just say that was magic, but it, <laughs> you actually used the menus on the side to say align and then to space equally. Yes. So there's some power user tools uh, to help 
uh, make nice. Exactly. And we have little you know, videos of everything. So this is going to align it to the top, uh, you know, little videos that will help you as well, right? When you hover over. Yeah. So this case has six inches on the base, but my batteries are only taking 2.8 inches. So I actually have a lot of space underneath here. So we can utilize all that space. You can go into the edit trays and you can see a side view and you'll see that there are, is a lot of space under here. So what we can do is split this into two trays, okay? So here's the top tray and here's the bottom tray. So the top tray has all your batteries and your bottom tray still has almost three inches. You could also you know, drag and drop uh, to change these sizes. So if I go into the bottom, I can add new, uh, you know, new shapes. So let's say we put in a shape for cables down here and uh, we'll add that in over here and then we'll take another one and we'll do that over here. And maybe we wanna make this bigger for cables. So basically on the top, we've got batteries and the bottom we have cables just like that. You'll also notice that um, I'm indented along the side and that's because every case tapers inwards as you go down the case. So you're basically gonna, you know, even if you have 20 and a half inches across at the top, you might have at the bottom 19 and a half inches. So it'll tell you what that is. So they all taper downwards. So you'll be able to tell whether or not your shape will fit. If you came, if you came too close to the edge, what's gonna happen is, Okay, you might actually cut a hole through the foam over here. So again, that 3D tool is really good for telling you, hey, you're, you're started out okay, but you ended up in the side. When you're designing a case with my case builder for a drone, mm -hmm. are there times where you might have two layers, but the, the drone is, is going through both layers and then there's batteries or other accessories on the other layers? Absolutely, there's a couple of ways to do that. Yes, yes, exactly. A lot of times what people will do is, uh, let me go back to um, the tray builder and let me get rid of the trays here because uh, what you can do is, what people do, uh, I don't know how deep this particular case is, but let's just, uh, Let's just go back to that photo tracer again for a second. Uh, we'll put that one back in, okay? I know I'm doing it fast, but it's actually pretty much this fast. Uh, so let's put that in as uh, 13 inches wide and let's make that five inches deep. All right, so this is now going really deep over here, okay? So what a lot of times people will do though is uh, they'll utilize space and, I didn't turn that off. Okay, <laughs> I'm I'm all uh, out of sorts over here. Uh, hold on a second. Let me just turn that off. I apologize, Dan. That's okay. I'm I'm. It's, it's probably one of your kids calling in. Say, okay. Dad, I'm watching you on WGAN TV. It, it, I, I think it was. It did say it did say home. So yes, I think it was. So what what a lot of times people what they'll do is uh, they'll take cavities or cutouts. Okay, um, and they will, uh, let's say I do that as a one inch here. Yeah, they'll take some cavities like this here and uh, they'll put them over here like this. And then they'll put cavities within these cutouts, okay? So if I took, a, let's say another cutout here, so a lot of times they'll do this, instead of one inches deep, I'm gonna make that four inches deep here. And now when I look at my 3D, what you'll have is, is that cutout underneath here. A yeah. lot of people use that as a way to, to really optimize the space. Because let's say you do have an iPad. Uh, let's say you do have um, you know, filters for your DSLRs. You don't necessarily need to uh, take up a whole flat space. And you could put a lot of things underneath it, uh, just like that. So then, how, how did you, now that's still one tray. That's still one tray, yes. So how do you get to a second tray with from this design sure so what we can do then is uh you're asking for good advanced type stuff so let's say you wanted this to go down to both trays so first let's do this let's uh change my depth here to be let's say two inches okay and then in my tray i'm going to split the tray okay and then i'm going to come to the top here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna copy it to my lower tray. 
So now that's in my lower tray as well. So what you could see is, is that uh, I have this shape in the, pretty much the same exact spot. It's a little bit tight over here, uh, but then you could put stuff, different things on each tray here. So I can take that and put this uh, battery onto this tray and then I can go over to my top tray, which is basically the top. And I could put a different set of objects. That one's way too big, but you understand what I'm saying. So uh, basically, yeah. The only thing though, Dan, this is an advanced uh, feature that you had me do. So uh, normally when you have a tray, I'm gonna stop my share for a second so that you guys can see. Normally when you have a tray, I don't know if you can see my, this yes. is the case here. Yes. This is for DSLR and lenses. But when you have a tray, we give you lift out straps so that you could get the tray out and a nice plastic piece right on the bottom, just like that. So that's automatically included. I don't have to design and say add handles. Every case is configured. Every case for tray is gonna have that nice plastic and the handles. So in the example that you just showed me that that drone's gonna hit that plastic, you would have to just email us and say, or call us and say, uh, hey, I want that drone cut out to go all the way through both both pieces like that but this is really okay. you know, this is you know, the perfect well uh, before you go on to the next piece i because i i think one of the features you have that's really special is uh, finger grips can you talk about that oh yeah oh yeah so as you can see our our foam is pretty dense right like i said it's a really nice hard but softer uh polyethylene foam so if you have a, a, a you know an item that goes right inside of your cutout you're never gonna get it out of the foam. You're gonna be like trying to, to pick it out of the foam. It's just not gonna work. So this is where the finger holes or finger notches come in. This makes it really easy to just come in and lift out your foam. So let's go back into the share for a second and show you that that's built in all throughout our system. So basically uh, let's just clear this here. So if the minute you put in, let's say a rectangle, uh, it's going to ask you whether you want finger notches. So top and bottom, left and right, custom. And it's gonna add those finger notches right into your shape. So really easy, just like that. Secondly, uh, in our library, every shape in our library is going to say, okay, flat with handles. That's going to be a bigger finger notch. This one has finger notches. So you can see that in right in our library, you can do that. This is a little deep for this tray. so. Uh, We'll put that with a little bit of foam underneath it. So it guides you through all of that. So yeah, basically with finger notches, uh, even with our photo tracer, you could set the finger notches um, with our finger notch tool. And I also wanna show you one other tool that's really, really nice. And that is our split shape tool. So I'm gonna give you a real life example of this, okay? So I'm going to go into my photo tracer. I'm gonna trace a photo and I'm gonna bring in this cinema camera, okay? The C300. So again, uh, I just drag with a white background, it traces it perfectly, okay? And now let's just say that this is uh, um, 12 inches and uh, I think I'm still in a tray. So let me just get rid of the trays there, Dan, so that I can, um, I can give you a real good example of this. So I just merged those trays. Let me just get rid of these shapes here. All right. So that's not really one inch. Let's say that's uh, five inches, okay, deep. So as you mentioned, that's going all the way down to the bottom, okay? But my camera lens is actually sticking up a little bit, right? It's not, it doesn't go all the way to the bottom. And I want some foam under it so that it doesn't turn or, or, or uh, you know, rock inside of the foam. So what you can do is go into our split shape feature. So you select the item go into split shape, and then it's gonna create, you know, a, uh, a movable uh, a mouse circle for you to split the shape along that line. So now, instead of five inches over here, I'm gonna set that to, let's say, three inches. So now when we look at the 3D, it's gonna show you that step up, right? So now that, uh, lens is beautifully cradled inside of the foam. Now with the finger notches, you're not done, right? You want finger notches. I want to be able to go here, click finger notch. I want to go to the top here, over here, 
and probably over here and here so that I can go ahead and grab it out of the foam without having to tilt it or to do anything that, uh, so I could just grab that right out of the foam right there. Really easy to do. Cool, and I, I see up in the top left, it says untitled in design. So pr presumably if uh, uh, I get called away, I could still save my design while I'm work in progress and, and keep coming back to it. Absolutely, so let's say this is WGN is my project. And my design, this is called, uh, you know, uh, C300 uh, in the middle, okay? So what you can do also, and uh, you can go ahead and duplicate that design. So now I have a second design. This is design two, okay? I can take my shapes. Maybe I want to move it around, see what it looks like. I want to add some other things in here, right? So you could basically... Uh, uh, try out other designs because this is like Google Docs, it saves it every time. So this allows you to then go back to your first design or go back to your second design. It even, no. allows, even allows you to change your case. So maybe you might want to uh, go to, you know, a different size case, uh, let's say, um, you know, bigger case. So maybe I want to go to a really large case because I, uh, you know, so now I'm in a, yeah, just like that but my first design was still in my first case. So it really is a very, very flexible to make sure that you get the, you know, the right design for your stuff. So I'm confused. I see that you're using case three. This one, yes, three I, that's SKB case, yes. Okay, how did, how did you know that that was an SKB case? Oh. Uh, the fact that you've been doing this for quite some time. Uh, that's a very good question, and that is something I need to fix on my website. So thank you uh, for for uh, uh, reminding me on that one. Yes, uh, that one is uh, unfortunately it should say SKB there. That is correct. Uh, okay, so those are the list of all the cases, but uh, there's actually two different lists. There's there's if I if you went back to the main website and you could sort by case and size, yes. and I can find the case that I want as opposed to, I need to actually know what the case number is. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So uh, maybe if you come off screen share, I, I, yeah. I, uh, I think I have a thousand questions. I'll try to limit it to maybe just Perfect. a, a okay. few as a, as a follow-up. Absolutely. Um, do you recommend that if I'm going to do a custom design that I start with one of the existing cases? So if I'm interested in DJI that I, I go find one that's close to what I want and begin modifying or start from scratch? Yes, no, I, I look on our website, try to see if there's an existing case under that pre-made designs. That's a good place to start. That's gonna give you at least some of the shapes that would normally go into that case. So absolutely start there. So let's say you wanted to do a, a, a Mavic case, right? You could pick one of our designs and then from there, but you really want a Mavic case plus like, you know, carry on size. We might not have it. It might start out in a smaller case. So yes, definitely start there and then switch the case like I did with that the little pencil mm -hmm. to the larger case and then start moving your shapes around. Absolutely. And if we don't have a case specifically that's pre-made, then you could start with just an empty case, pick your size case that you want and then start dragging from our library. You mentioned that there are videos for, for some training on using My Case Builder web app. Yes. Uh, so I watch the, the videos. I still have questions. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel still, I, I feel stuck. Okay. Now, now what? Okay. So that absolutely happens a lot. Uh, so what we have is a fantastic program. It's called ProConnect. So with ProConnect, you could schedule a half hour free session with one of our experts who basically guide you through and, you know, whatever question you have, oh, I wanted to make that, you know, tray or I want something underneath or how to, they'll just go through it. They'll share the screen, share your screen, look at your design, anything that you need, review it. You could do that with ProConnect. Okay. If you still, if you still are uneasy or you would rather us professionally design it for you, and then we do have Pro Design, where we can then go ahead for an extra charge. Starts around a hundred dollars for our designers to to go through and design it for you. So that is available as well. 
Okay, so there's training. So m most of our photographers, we had around network, forum, community, self-employed, uh, pretty smart. Uh, I think they could probably design it on their own, but still get stuck. Uh, know that there's a, a half hour free session. So take it as far as you can and then get uh, uh, some un, unstuck professional help. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, uh, so I went through all that. I've designed my case. I went ahead and I placed my order. Yep. Uh, um, case comes, I put my stuff in it and I have this sinking feeling. <laughs> I, I've made a mistake. Now what? Okay. So let me just share my screen one more time again, because I'll show you that checkout process here. So when you're ready to check it out and you go to add to cart, okay. What's going to happen is you could pick your case in foam or your foam only, right? So you, some people already have their case and they just need their foam only, but let's say we're picking our case in foam. Then that allows us to choose our foam, right? Here's our base foam. Top Guard, which I mentioned, the Esther, which is that soft foam, and the PE Pro Cell foam. Uh, and then you can pick your color, like we had mentioned as well. So let's say you want a blue. Pick your lid, Esther convoluted lid, or just a solid. Usually people go with the convoluted. That's why it's defaulted there. And this is where the, your question is answered. It's in the fail safe, right? So what fail safe is, it's a design protection. Because we understand that, you know, sometimes you might measure wrong or off a little bit or whatever it is, or even decide that you might want to put something else in your case that you forgot about in the first time. So if you do take failsafe, it allows you for 30 days, you could return your foam to us and we'll make you a brand new piece of foam with your new changes for free and ship it out under our dime. And it's very reasonable. It starts at $9.99, but you can see for this size, it's $11.99 for that uh, carry-on size. So it's a really, really good price. For the really, really large cases, it goes up sometimes to about $40. Uh, but for most cases, it's around that $12, $9, $10 range. Um, so that's a really nice uh, thing to do. Now, we do also do realize that some people you know, might decide not to take this fail-safe protection, which is fine. Uh, and then they still maybe are not so happy with their foam because maybe they made a mistake. Uh, we don't want anybody to not be happy with their foam. So we have what's called a do-over protection. Uh, that comes automatically. So just in case you know you really need to do it over, uh, we'll do it for you for 50% of the original price So to help you out. So this way you, you, you know, you're sure that you're getting uh, the foam that you need. We don't want you to have to necessarily take a knife out and start you know, chopping out the, the foam uh, and, and, and butcher your foam. We want you to have a nice, clean presentation. So I got two options. Yes. Uh, fail safe, which is go, go pay a couple extra dollars just in case I made a mistake and I got 30 days to make sure I'm happy with the foam. Uh, if I'm not, uh, I can send it back to you and you'll send me back a replacement foam based on my new design. Correct. Or second, uh, do over. Uh, which is, uh, uh, I, I wasn't happy with it. I didn't do the, the fail safe, uh, but you'll do the foam at half price Correct. on the do over. Uh, okay. So um, uh, um, we started talking a little bit about, I think, Esther foam. I, I think of that as pick and pluck. I don't, is that a brand name? Pick That's and a pluck? brand name. That's a Pelican brand name. That's the pre-cut cubes that you can pick out and yeah. pull apart. Yeah, in, in, uh, Steve, be, be, before I met you, and uh, I think it was at a PPA conference exhibit area a number of years ago, I had only heard of pick and pluck. That was the only thing I ever heard of. So my, my whole thinking about foam was, okay, I, I buy a case and I get this stuff. Um, it probably drives you nuts. Could you please speak on the topic of if, if somebody was open to using something else other than pick and pluck, the downside of pick and pluck, I, I don't mean as a brand, you called it Esther, but the but that 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 kind of foam versus what your default, what uh, my case builder default foam is. And, okay. and I, I just want to tee this up. Uh, it's probably, uh, my wife would probably say overstood, but I, I just know that we have photographers in our community who will say, uh, no, I've been using this 
this foam for forever. Uh, I know it's got some problems, but it's it's what I've been using, and it's I just feel safe ordering the same thing, and it's worn out. So I'm looking for uh, getting some new pick and pluck foam. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure, sure. No, you teed it up perfectly. So the the uh, pick and pluck, okay, uh, or cubed foam, you know, if you don't want to use the brand name, uh, that's been around since like the 80s. And that technology was great in the 80s. But we're in the 2020s now. And we could do a lot better with our foam. So the one of the main things, though, is really that what I told you about before, which is that squeeze ability, right? So because it compresses so much, Okay, you really need a good amount of foam around all of your items to protect them. Also, that cubes are one inch by one inch. So you, if you take away and leave one inch in between, that takes up a lot of foam inside of your case. And as also anybody's used pick and pluck knows, they just break apart when it's one inch. You need like two, three, four cubes at a time. And then everybody who's used pick and pluck knows that the minute that you start putting something in, it presses down and, and the pieces break off and fall apart. So I'm going to show you a case right over here. Okay. This is for a spark. Okay. See how much I put inside of this case. See the walls are only quarter inch thick on here, but yet still protect and it's still strong. See how I get right up to the edge right over here. Okay. You would never be able to put all of this stuff and have it protected in an ester foam or pick and pluck or cubed foam. It just won't happen. Uh, on a drop, anytime you drop it, what's going to happen is, is that your items are going to continue to want to go down. They're going to push down like that. They're going to hit the bottom of the case. They're going to hit the sides. They're going to hit other objects inside, and it's going to break. So yeah, if you're ginger with it and never drop it, it might work. Uh, we recommend, again, going with that material or using just thicker ester. Putting less inside of your case will also work. So ester does work. Need lots of foam around it to protect. Polyethylene PE top guard gets rid of all of those issues. You still sell the, you still sell the squares. You still sell we ester. Do. Why? We do. Why? Uh, we, well, we, we, there are people who just, they, like you said, that's all they know and they're, they're used to it. So we do sell it, not a lot of it. Uh, we do sell it. Um, and usually our engineers have to go back to the customer and say, you can't fit all of this inside of your case with Esther because your walls are too thin and it's just going to smash together. So, but you know, some people do like the ester and you know, we'll sell it. It's not a bad product. It's just, you have to know the limitations of it. Okay, so I complete my order. It's online, I've paid for it. I'm looking forward, I, uh, uh, um, when will I know there's a problem? Sure, sure. So number one, uh, the thing we do is we have a flat rate shipping. It's $8.99. So if you get this gigantic case behind me, $8.99, that small case, $8.99, easy. Also, if and, you saw, and uh, free shipping for WGAN for our members, WGAN TV. So yes. WGAN.info forward slash my case builder and free shipping coupon code WGA free ship, all one word. Okay. Perfect. So, yes. so I, it's, I'm not so much concerned about like when's it coming. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm concerned did I design something that the engineer is going to say is a problem? And right. when am I going to get that? that call or email. Sure. So our, our lead time right now is, is about 10 to 12 business days. And at about three business days or four business days, that's when our engineers, after the order is processed, making sure we have the cases, we have the phone for you. At, at that time, an engineer will check your design. We'll look at it just sort of the way we were, seeing if there's holes in it, seeing if everything's too close together. If they chose ester foam, do they have enough space around it? You know, will we be able to make this and will the customer be happy with it? That's in about three days. So three, four days. You will get an email from one of our engineers saying, hey, with a screenshot, with a circle around the section, that's an issue. And we'll say, you know, what should we do about this? Can we move this over here? Can we, you know, rearrange it a little bit? And you'll go through that with the engineer. Uh, so it, it's, yeah, around uh, three, four days. That I'll know whether I've designed something that's, that's, that's going to put me in a pickle. Exactly. 
and you won't ship it if if the, if it's a problem. Me, meaning, I've designed a case that, that uh, you're not confident that the equipment would be safe. That the design, or what are the, some of the typical reasons that a design gets kicked out of the queue by the engineers? Oh, sure. So you know, there are times that people really don't understand that tapering of the of the case where it goes down on the side so the top is bigger than the bottom so they'll look at something and it might fit nicely on the top by the time they get down to the bottom it's just too close right so that's one reason uh we we, we made the, the software very uh, uh, uh free open uh, so that you can kind of overlap rectangles if you want to make complex shapes or overlap shapes some people sometimes get really too close to the edge. We could go about a quarter and sometimes they're like a 16th inch, like with two shapes right next to each other, you know, like, like that, where you can barely see daylight. Then we'll call uh, or email, I mean, the customer and say, hey, you know, that's going to kick you back. Um, and the other thing, again, is that material type. So, yeah, if you use an ester and you try to go real close, like I did with this uh, drone case, we're going to kick that back and say, hey, you know, either let's take out a couple things, maybe we can rearrange it, or maybe you want to switch to a, a, a different foam. It's the same price. So maybe- uh, I, I heard you say that uh, if I just want to buy the foam for my case, I have the case, I can do that. Yes, that's correct. Can I just buy the case? Yes, you could just buy the case as well. Yeah, so if you need an empty case, we can get, yeah, get you the empty case. Even if you need a case with pick and pluck, we do sell those as well. Uh, and then you can get the foam only or the case, correct. Okay, so if I just need the case, I can buy a case. If I just need the foam because I already have the case, I can just buy the foam. Yes. If I, at some point in my photography career, the case is fine, but I have a lot of new gear and it's switched out, then I can use my existing case come back to my case builder, uh, redesign yep. to configure to the gear that I have now. Yep. Uh, and that's okay. Um, uh, you, you mentioned that your factory is in Patterson, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, actually, the we get around network forum uh, members in 150 plus countries. Wow. So, uh, if I'm in Europe, if I'm in Asia, if I'm in uh, Australia, uh, can you still help us? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. So about four, three, three, four years ago, uh, the pandemic, I don't remember. I lost that year, but it's uh, four years ago. Uh, we opened up a partnership with a company. Uh, 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 my case builder opened up a branch in Europe. So in Amsterdam uh, area, we will ship to all of Europe. So uh, they have the software, they do all of the customer service over there in any language uh, as well. So we have our Europe location and factory. We have our New Zealand factory, which also does Australia, New Zealand. And then we have our Japan, Osaka factory, which does Asia as well. So yeah, we can cover you wherever you are from here. We do Canada, we do uh, South America. But uh, we should be covered. Maybe not Antarctica yet, but uh, maybe one day. Okay. Arigato gozaimasu. Muchas gracias. Merci Berku. There you go. Uh, what have we not covered today about my case builder that would be helpful for a real estate photographer, a Matterport service provider, a drone photographer to, to know about my case builder that we haven't discussed? Um, well, we, we discussed those WGAN coupons and uh, the fact that once you go there, you can, we have the, you know, the Matterport specifically built that you helped us design the WGAN Matterport cases. We have three different models, four different models now we have on there. So if you, you go through the affiliate there and go through to the Matterport section, we have those pre-made cases that we discussed in our previous video. If you wanted to look at that as well in the archives which explains everything about that. So those are really nice pre-made cases that are perfect for carrying your Matterport. Uh, we have them in different price ranges and sizes. So that's number one. Uh, and then number two, the main thing is, is uh, to remember, to take away is that we're here to answer your questions, to help you either via email, ProConnect, Zoom calls, you name it so that you get a custom foam insert solution for carrying your gear. You've spent so much money and time 
And it says your business, right? So you can't afford to drop it, lose it, you know, all those types of things. The other thing too, uh, Dan, is that by having a space for everything, especially now with going to be with printing on the foam and labeling it, you when you get out to your house to 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 do your your shoot, you can make sure that when you leave there, you have everything. That everything's in its space, so you're not leaving, you know, a tripod, a battery, uh, anything like that, because you can see where it's missing inside of your case. If you have a pick and pluck or just everything thrown inside a bag. You might not know you left a cable or you left the doorstop or whatever it is that you normally use. So that's another thing that I think is a very valuable for your, your uh, watchers. Uh, and uh, my, my last question, Steve, um, what kind of designs do you see that you go, oh, I wish I could have told them this? And it would have saved them so much time, energy, and effort. And I know that they would be a lot happier. Uh, so, so a lot of times uh, people will, uh, they will over-engineer their foam. So foam is a giving, you know, kind of a, a medium, right? It's, it kind of moves. It's a little bit on that. So what we'll see a lot is somebody, let's say, has a, a lens and they want to have like, you know, like a taper inside of their lens. So they might put like concentric circles, like 15 concentric circles that are like a, you know, millimeter apart so that it, it comes down. We can't make that, you don't need it, it's overkill. You, you know, just the top one and the bottom one to hold your lens and everything's gonna be beautiful. So that's the basic kind of thing that I see is a little bit of over-engineering. Sometimes, you know, a rectangle will fit a circle. Sometimes, you know, it's not gonna go anywhere, a cylinder. Sometimes, uh, you know, uh, a lot of times if you have something that has something sticking out on the left side and you put it in, okay, where it's sticking out on the left side, sometimes it's very good to put the same exact shape on the right side so it could be universal, right? So that, that's another tip, pro tip, so that you don't have to worry about putting it in exactly the same way if something could be a different direction. So, you know, those are the kinds of things. And last pro tip I'll give you, Dan, is that a lot of times um, people sometimes don't understand weight distribution in their case, okay? So obviously uh, cases are flat, they tip over on their sides. So depending on how you're gonna carry that case, if you're gonna carry it on the side like a briefcase, you want your heaviest items on the bottom in the center, okay? So this way it's not tilting you down forward or backwards. Try to get that heavy item in there and distribute the weight evenly on those sides. If you're going to mostly uh, take it and drag it like a, a you know, valet case uh, like that, uh, then you could put it anywhere inside the case because now your wheels are distributing the weight for you as you carry it. So that's the other pro tip that I have. Awesome, Steve, thanks for being on the show today. You're welcome. Thank you, Dan. We've been visiting with Steve Holland. Steve is the president, founder, and owner of My Case Builder. You can find My Case Builder at mycasebuilder.com or use the WGAN affiliate link, wgan.info forward slash My Case Builder for the two special offers to get free 12 months WGAN TV training you in Matterport when you use that affiliate link to buy any My Case Builder case for $150 or more directly from My Case Builder, uh, and to get the free shipping with the coupon code WGA free ship. Uh, Steve, thanks again. Steve in, uh, uh, in Patterson, New Jersey. I'm Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum, and you've been watching WGAN TV 